I've spent the better part of this year working on a very secret project and it's finally finished. I think it's pretty cool and hope you will too. My name is Ru Atiti and this is... Over the last five months, I've been working on this. The Amsidarian Gazette. For those familiar with this channel, You've come to associate it with animation and you likely stumbled upon it watching one of our short films. Look, I am not quitting animation nor do I plan to become a web designer. While I do relish the geeky side of life, trying to keep me from creating art is a bit like putting a leash on your cat and taking it on a walk. So then, why did I spend a lot of time working on such a basic website? Well, my boorish friend, it is not just a simple website. It's a digital art masterpiece, a commentary on our obsession with technology and the overwhelming centralization of the Internet of Things to just a handful of websites. <sighs> all right, all right, <laughs> just kidding. Of course you're not and cultured because you subscribe to this channel. And you're right, it is just a website. However, as I expound on my reasons for the creation of the website, you may find it is not too far removed from a discourse on the monopolization of the internet by a handful of companies and the orchestrated subversion of creative expression for monetary gain. I don't want to sound any more pretentious than I do, so let's dive into the factors that influence the creation of the Amsterdam Gazette website. This will help you get a better understanding of the project. The first one isn't really surprising. It is, of course, AI. You won't hear me moan about how AI art is not real art. I will leave that to the snobs and the art curators. Art is a medium of expression and if you can express yourself with AI generated images and videos, more power to you. As stated earlier, I do enjoy a lot of geeky delights. That's how I wound up in animation. I also love reading about different disciplines like engineering, physics, history, biology and tech as well as other boring fields like business, economics, and politics. I am particularly fascinated with future technologies and the reality-bending innovations being realized across different industries. So, like a moth to a flame, I was drawn to AI when I learned about its use in my industry back in 2018 and have been experimenting with it since. While I think it's a fascinating piece of technology, I do have reservations on what it can really do for creative work. And in all honesty, I'm yet to find a solid use case for it when it comes to a live production environment. I have seen commercial directors use it to inflate their invoices to corporate clients. So for now, it remains more of a hype train to skim money off those soulless mega corporations. My main slide with AI isn't the technology itself, but with its custodians. Those so-called AI companies and how they go about obtaining data sets to train their models. Most of these AI companies, if not all, train their models on data acquired without the consent of those who own them. With those most afflicted being professionals in the creative field. AI has given digital artists, as I like to call them, more avenues to rip off popular artists. Before, they would have had to hire cheap artists to replicate a particular style and use the art to sell prints and t-shirts. With AI, they are able to replicate any artistic style and use it for financial gain, thus further enabling their unethical business practices. This has made a lot of artists, like myself, wary of sharing art online at least not as much as I did when I was starting out. You can also argue, by sharing our digital art freely online, we devalued our work. Maybe that's true. I don't know. But 
what I do know is the platforms artists use to share their work and connect with fans are mm, how do I put it problematic and yes I am talking about social media all the major social media platforms have been caught training AI on the content published by its users some platforms even claim ownership of the content posted on the website or provide provisions that allow them to sell content to AI companies. This is typically done without fair compensation and knowledge of the original creators and with access to so much data apart from selling personal information to marketing companies and data aggregators, selling images, videos and other creative works to AI companies has become a very lucrative proposition for those few companies that dominate much of the internet. While still on the topic of social media platforms, let's touch on their ever-changing community guidelines. First of all, these create a very precarious foundation to build a business entirely upon nowadays. There are several instances of creators getting their accounts terminated because something they created a few years back doesn't abide by the latest guidelines on a platform. While in some cases, the termination of accounts is justified, this doesn't negate the realities that these policies can also be weaponized by individuals or same platforms as a means of silencing critical voices. Animation is art, and art plays a vital role in highlighting injustices and prejudices in society. These community guidelines limit the kind of art we can post on social media platforms first undermining a core component of artistic expression. Artists are hence left to create soulless media that isn't offensive to anyone and doesn't nourish our need for humanistic expression. A kind of junk food for the soul. To me, social media feels more and more like a game of musical chairs, not knowing what new guidelines will be implemented in a week or two, or how it would impact my work. More and more, it feels like being in an authoritarian regime where only certain opinions are allowed and those who step on the loosely defined red lines risk having entire livelihoods taken away because of political or social commentary that may be deemed inappropriate by the censors. I have gone through the unfortunate experience of being deplatformed and I personally understand the profound impact it can have on one's psyche and confidence. I want to talk about my experience here, but you can read it all on the Obsidarian Gazette and how it inspired my upcoming project. I also want the creative freedom to pursue stories that are meaningful. This is slightly related to the previous reason of increased censorship on popular social media platforms. Having my own platform will grant the freedom to tell stories that really matter to me and reflect my experiences or of those I empathize with, without the fear of losing my ability to make a living or catering to some algorithm. I want my creative work to act as a mirror to society and spin tales that touch on issues that affect us, tales highlighting historical events which may have been forgotten or tales that simply capture the human experience. I want stories that trigger an emotional response from my audience. Could make you happy, cry, sad, or angry. That's fine. Just as long as it isn't boring, that will be a transgression against those who taught me everything I know. Besides, I spent close to 10 years working on commissions for businesses, and uninspired stories is the last thing I want to present to you. Boring stories may be acceptable for corporate clients. Let's be honest, there's only a handful of ways you can produce a corporate video without rendering out a complete snooze fest. This is not an environment where creativity thrives, so it is disheartening to see this plague of uninspired creativity spread across the entire entertainment industry. Films, games, they all feel like an endless bit of sack, particularly animation. Perhaps. 
we are in purgatory and we don't even know it. But when was the last time you got excited for an animated film? Honestly, let me know in the comments. For me, it was when The Isle of Dogs was released back in 2018. Animation studios have overwhelmingly prioritized profits over creative storytelling. They've become corporate machines and the suits have completely taken over. This is true in the gaming industry as well. It's not that they don't have talented people working on movies and games, they do. But working in all those glitzy and glamorous studios is not any different from working at a cubicle in big pharma or big tech. It's really no surprise that huge corporations is where creativity and expression goes to die. And those animation studios who grew up idolizing are all part of a bigger conglomerate. Let me give you an insider's blueprint for producing an animated movie nowadays. One, create cute characters that sell a lot of merchandise. And two, spin an uninspired story around those cute characters. If it is a sequel or a mildly successful IP, that's even better. That's all you need to pitch a successful animated movies to these studios. It's not about stories like Ratatouille or Wally -E that challenge your view of the world, at least not anymore. Perhaps that's why there's a flood of sequels from Disney, Pixar and every major animation studio. If you ever glimpsed at the Emoji movie and wondered how an entire team of writers came up with this idea, now you know. In live action, independent filmmakers are able to step away from the studio system and craft something creative and fresh at very low budgets. Animation remains a bit cost prohibitive for independent creators, especially if you follow the same production workflows used in major studios. Through Little Ruby, I have been able to streamline my animation production process in order to deliver projects efficiently. Even in my case, animation still remains more expensive than live action. I st still strongly believe reimagining the production pipeline can help make independent animation projects a bit less cost prohibitive. Yet another reason you should read the Amsterdam Gazette, where I'll be discussing insights on projects from the Ruby as they're being developed on a weekly basis. I may, I may be able to streamline my animation production process, but funding still remains a huge obstacle to bringing fresh animated stories to you. The Amsterdam Gazette is a subscription on the website and the revenue generated from it will be funneled towards projects coming out of Little Ruby. This will grant the studio creative freedom to work on interesting projects without relying on external funding and altering the stories to solely generate profits to repay backers. You may not like to hear the S-word dropped on you like that, and I get it. Taking the reasons presented to you into consideration, Little Ruby's own bespoke platform grants a lot of freedom for creativity to thrive and to tell stories that wouldn't otherwise get made in the animation industry today. Since the platform will showcase intellectual properties still in development, the subscription acts as a deterrent against those who intend to abuse the website. And in case you want to cancel your subscription, you can simply navigate to the foot of the website, click on Manage Membership link, submit your email address, and your subscription will be cancelled. No fuss, no stress. I won't even ask why. It's equally easy to sign up. And the best part, you don't need to create an account. An email address and your names will do. The site doesn't store any information and to access the website, you'll need a token, which will be delivered to your email address every week and upon signing up. So it may be wise to use an active email address. The Amsterdam Gazette monthly subscription grants you the following parts. Members can read screenplays from upcoming projects, concept art, character design sketches, and other production materials get early access to finished projects and limited run products before they get released to the public. The first 100 members will attain the founder status at Little Ruby. While this won't grant you actual ownership of the business, 
it means your name will be visible in the credits of all upcoming projects. Isn't that cool? You also become part of a very select group of individuals who have access to all the Ruby's upcoming projects. You, you also get exclusive members only discounts on any future products from Little Ruby. Now, isn't that a gem? Perhaps you're intrigued, but you feel this is too much commitment too soon and wish to take it slow. Well, consider subscribing to this channel. I will be sharing updates here as well, so you can still be part of the creative journey. It's free and next week I'll tell you all about our upcoming project. Or if you are a carefree spirit who's open to new adventures, you could become part of the Ruby's Gemini's as a member of the Amsterdam Gazette. You'll get to know what the next project is going to be before everyone else, plus read the intriguing story that inspired it. And as a member exclusive, read the first 10 pages of the screenplay. It's spoiler free and only available on the Amsterdam Gazette. Looking forward to seeing you there, links in the description.